Good evening, everyone. Just going to wait a minute or two. <clears throat> Just waiting for some people to join. Hey, Leslie. Hi, Stephanie. Thank you for joining. <laughs> I am so sorry that we did not start last week like I had planned originally. Hi, Amy. I was so sick with the holidays and traveling and it was it was not a good it was not a good thing. Hi Kimberly. Hi Christina. So anyway, thank you for being patient with me. Um, <clears throat> still, um, nursing my cough with oils and peppermint tea and my thieves cough suppressants or cough drops. And I got my peppermint. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> All right. Well, <clears throat> because a lot of people are going to be watching this on replay. Uh, I want to not spend a whole lot of time at the beginning um, because, you know, it's kind of annoying for people who are watching the replay, right? <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and get started. I want to be prompt. So good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me as we begin our Raising Oily Children teaching series. I feel like um, I feel like this is I'm doing an, another 90 day home detox. It feels like deja vu. <laughs> um, <clears throat> my name is Terry McCollum, aka the Granola Babe. Um, those of you who know me know that from the beginning, I've been quite outspoken about creating a healthy and healing home and teaching people how to do that. Um, I've written a book called Granola Living, and in my book, it contains over 100 recipes for every room in your home, and I've taught, like I mentioned, a 90-day home detox teaching series, which um, you can actually find the recorded videos. There's 13 of them, um, 13 weeks, and they can be found on the granolababes.net website, um, so if you're interested in that, you can... <clears throat> join the group, join the 90 day home detox group, which is, it was 90 days of just learning and going through our home um, and doing kind of a ditch and switch, removing the toxins and learning about healthy, safe, effective solutions to replace those toxic, um, toxic, toxic chemicals that we have in our home. Um, so I'm very passionate about helping people remove the toxins from their home and replace them with natural, safe, and health-promoting solutions. And I believe this to be the very foundation of a healthy lifestyle. And I've often said that you can have all the essential oils in the world, but if your home is toxic, it is fighting against all the good that you are trying to do. So this has kind of been my mission for a number of years now. Um, my story with essential oils and young living began nine years ago when for many, many, many years prior, I suffered from respiratory and women's issues. And I learned that many of the things that I had in my home in the way of personal care, cleaning products, plugins, air fresheners and candles, I learned that these were the major culprits and triggers to the issues that I was having. <clears throat> So, since removing them from my home, integrating essential oils and other healthy lifestyle habits, I no longer suffer, but I'm able to support my body with the things it needs to function as God designed. So, I, a few years ago, I, along with a friend, we started the Granola Babes Facebook group with the hopes of uniting other moms and dads who also wanted to create a more natural life and home for their families. 
and since the since then um, years ago this group has grown into a movement it's not just a Facebook group it's actually a movement um, granola babes is a movement of moms dads grandparents aunts uncles teachers nurses teenagers and children who are passionate about living the granola life and want to spread this lifestyle throughout our communities and our families and friends because we believe it results in a happier healthier thriving life and my husband and I have a 13 year old daughter Sophia uh, the granola team and we began our oily journey when she was just four years old and I look back on how we've used the oils with her through the different stages of development and how she uses them now and I have become and grown to be more passionate about this topic of raising oily children for this reason um, I'm always going to be a huge proponent and and passionate speaker about creating a healthy healing home I will always like that's kind of my thing right like I just that's what I do I, I love to teach people about how to create a uh, not just a a green home <clears throat> but a healing home however I have learned and seen and witnessed things a lot more lately with children and then then living through the the tween and beginning the teenage years with my daughter I'm noticing more of a need more a, a huge need um, and and there's a number of reasons so I just want to share those reasons with you why I have started doing this raising oily children um, teaching series so number one hang on I have seen firsthand over and over again children respond so well to the oils so much so that they ask for them and know that they feel better when they use them I'm talking about two and three year olds people have sent me videos of their three year olds asking for oils using oils putting them on talking about the oils and it just makes my heart melt and I'm just like oh my gosh like this is incredible so I keep I see that over and over and over again and that gets me really excited the second thing is our children need safe effective and healthful ways to cope with the stressors of life both physical and mental obviously <clears throat> we can use our oils and oily supplements to support our physical well-being but I am seeing such a need in the mental and emotional aspects of life with my teenager and I and I know that it's helpful um, for even younger tween and even younger toddlers and 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 um, and you know four five six-year-olds like they need and they can uh, they can benefit from essential oils for emotional support as well number three I don't believe many of the over-the-counter drugs available to us are safe for our children or you or me I, I just I, I'm not convinced for one stinking second <laughs> so we need we need healthy safe effective alternatives okay number four I believe most people would prefer to use more natural methods with their children they just don't know how I've had so many people say well I, I I'm I'm so tired of being on medication or I don't like to take take medication I'm not the type of person that uses a lot of drugs and medications and stuff like that I'd rather not do that I'd rather find something natural it's just that a lot of people don't know how to do that um, I number five I believe it's our responsibility to teach our children <coughs> how to care for themselves <coughs> so that they grow up to be capable health conscious and confident adults who are the CEOs of their own health this is our responsibility as our parents this is our responsibility to teach our children um, how to do this where else are they gonna learn it they're not gonna learn this at school that's for darn sure <laughs> um, number six the other reason why I'm doing this and I'm and I have this growing passion to share all of this with you is because even though I greatly appreciate modern medicine I know we need it I am grateful for doctors I am grateful for modern medicine don't for a second think that I don't 
think that we should go to the doctor or use whatever. Like, I am not anti-doctor, but I don't believe that modern medicine has all the answers. It's not the end-all be-all of our, our health. Um, so more often than not, our medical system today is about treating the symptoms instead of root cause of illness and disease. And it pays no attention to preventative care. Um, doctors are prescribing things to mask or cover up symptoms, not the root cause of what's really going on. Nor do they spend a lot of time talking about ways to be healthy and how to prevent things. <coughs> whereas that's what we're about. So we have safe, natural, effective, and health-promoting solutions available to us given by God in the form of plants <laughs> and essential oils. I believe when used properly, they support our bodies in the natural mending and healing process. So these are the reasons why, um, these are the reasons why I'm very passionate about sharing this information with you. Um, so I want to say, though, that the information that I provide is for educational purposes only. I am not a doctor. I am not a medical professional. I do not claim to be. I am a mom, okay? I am simply a mom who, for the last nine years, has used essential oils with my daughter since she was four. I am not here to diagnose, prescribe, or treat any condition of the body. I recommend that you seek the advice of your doctor concerning your health, okay? What I'm going to do, um, uh, what I'm going to do is share with you, what I'm going to share with you during this series um, for the next 60 days comes from my own personal experience from talking to other moms and dads, witnessing what other moms and dads have been doing, talking to them, knowing their firsthand experiences, hearing their testimonials. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me, and then also doing my own research. I'm a researcher. If you don't know this about me, just go through the 90 day home detox and you will learn that I am very much a researcher. I like to know science. I like to have science to back up what I'm what I'm saying. And I don't like to say things unless I know for sure. Um, that's why this actually this series stresses me out a little bit more. A little bit more than the um, uh, 90 day home detox um, because I the 90 day home detox was very I mean it, it's been I don't know this when you're talking about people's children and babies it's a little more delicate and and there's you know it's serious business so I want to make sure that I'm careful about the information I share with you um, and I just really encourage you to do your own research. Please do your own research. You should be doing your own research anyway. Um, so you are the CEO of your family's health and your health. Everybody's experiences with essential oils is different. So what works for one person may not work as well for another because our body chemistry is all different. So we have to take other people's experiences with a grain of salt and, and um, kind of test it out for ourselves. So I've been experimenting for the last nine years and I'm still experimenting and I'm still learning new and better ways to use the oils. You are a smart person, okay? You are intelligent, you are capable, you know your body and you know your children better than anybody else. So ultimately you have to make the decision the decisions that you feel are best and listen to that gut instinct. And honestly, I think as moms, I think our superpower is our gut instinct. <laughs> so if you don't feel right about something, then just don't do it. Just don't do it. I trust that you will do the best for your child. So before we dig in, I think it's imperative that I mention that as I refer to essential oils throughout this entire teaching series, I'm going to be speaking specifically and strictly about Young Living Essential Oils. I cannot vouch for any other essential oil company. I know and trust Young Living for their purity, potency, eff efficacy, and safety. And they are the only essential oil company that owns their own farms and has what they call a seed to seal guarantee. And this means for every bottle of oil they produce, they have had control over everything. 
from the teeny tiny little seed planted in the ground to cultivating, harvesting, distilling, testing, and bottling. This cannot be said of any other company. They are, Young Living, they are the oldest, most well-respected essential oil company in the world, and I have never in my life seen a company with such integrity and commitment to doing things the right way. Gary Young, our founder, said he never made an oil for a profit. He always made oils for a purpose. And I love that about them, and I trust this company implicitly. So when I refer to an oil or product, I'm referring specifically to Young Living, not an oil you find in the store or on Amazon, okay? Okay, so tonight we're going to talk about safety. We're going to talk about application methods, tools to have on hand, and then um, I'm just going to talk a, a little bit about ages, specifically zero to six months. So <clears throat> we're going to build upon um, our, our learning every single week. Um, so I, I hope that you will, you know, just follow me and, um, and we're just, like I said, we're going to build upon each and every single week. So using, um, using essential oils with babies, infants, and children is a very hot topic because there's a lot of information out there and not all of it is true. So even claims and things that are, are mentioned about the, um, the uh, dangers or whatever of using essential oils or, or even certain, um, uh, what do I want to say? Um, 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 um. Um, studies per se or whatever that are, that have been brought up um, not I shouldn't say studies I should say things that have been reported um, a lot of those things there's a lot of misinformation about essential oils with in those particular instances where um, a situation was reported as being um, uh, dan a danger to a child or baby or whatever, usually, typically, more often than not, it was misuse, um, it was uh, it was with adulterated, not pure essential oils. We're talking about um, oils that are not high quality oils that were used and administered improperly, okay? So like, high, 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 high amounts of oil um, that were improperly used or ingested, and these were poor quality oils. So a lot of those things that you're going to see, um, precautions and dangers and stuff like that, have to do with things like that, like they're high, high, high amounts of oil that nobody in their right mind should be using. It's you know, it, that's why we're we're going to be educated. <laughs> we want to make sure that we have the right information so that we don't make those those mistakes. But I just want to to say that the short and sweet of it is that essential oils, pure essential oils, can be a very very safe and effective natural solution to supporting our 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 health and our children's health and our baby's health. So. The big question is, is it safe to use essential oils with babies zero to six months? So <clears throat> a teeny tiny baby does not need, nor can they handle what children or adults can with potent essential oils. Okay, so just like you're not going to give a four-year-old, say if you're going to give them some over-the-counter medication, you're not going to give a four-year-old the same amount that you are going to give to a 12-year-old or even an eight-year-old, okay? So a lot of it has to do with weight. It has to do with age. Um, but just know that essential oils are obviously extremely potent. They are very, they're potent substances. So this, you wouldn't use the same amount on a baby <coughs> or child <coughs> as you would a teenager or an adult um, so skin skin does not fully develop until three months of age so from zero to three months of age a baby's skin is still developing even you know outside the womb it's still growing and developing so and it's so much thinner and more permeable than ours as adults so it's not recommended 
to use oils topically on babies zero to six months. Now, are there instances where people <coughs> do or have, <coughs> excuse me, um, yes, I know, I know people who have used essential oils properly on babies between the ages of zero and six months. However, I am not going to say that that is something you should do because it is generally not recommended that you use oils topically on babies zero to six months, okay? I know that there are <clears throat> parents who have anointed their children with, with um, frankincense when they come, when they're born. And <clears throat> I've got no problems with that. I, I've heard story after story after story of people who do that, who anoint their children, the crown of their head with frankincense when they are born. And I think that's really cool, actually. But, um, but on a regular basis, it is typically not recommended that you're using oils topically um, for your, you know, for your infant zero to six months. So children have fewer metabolizing enzymes than adults, so you should exercise caution. They don't have within their body the thing that will help them to metabolize those oils like we do, okay? Secondhand oiling, what I call secondhand oiling. So um, <coughs> secondhand oiling <coughs> is like when you put oil on yourself and you walk by somebody and they're like, ooh, you smell good, what is that? You know, like that's secondhand oiling. Um, so a good example of this is um, my, my nephew. Um, my nephew when he was, I don't know, he was just, he was a couple months old or whatever. I don't even know how old he was. He was really, really, really little. Um, but when I would go to hold him, um, he would, inevitably fall asleep like he just like I would start holding him and he just like went to sleep and and everyone joked that that it was probably because like I the oils that I have on me at all times um, was very soothing and calming to him so that's secondhand oiling I did not put any oils on him I wasn't even we weren't even diffusing oils in the room it was just through osmosis, through just them being on my skin. And he wasn't even touching my skin. He was, you know, um, obviously with uh, my clothes. My clothes were covering up my, well, my oils, but you could still <coughs> smell them. So that's secondhand oiling. So secondhand oiling in those first six months of life is more than enough goodness for your baby. Um, so when using oils yourself, just put oils in places that won't have direct contact with your baby's skin, or at least wait 30 minutes before making skin to oily skin contact. So say if you are um, breastfeeding, you know, do not put do not put oils on your breasts or on your your nipples or anything like that because your baby will ingest them that way if you do that so um, so put your oil you can use oils you can use your oils but um, cover up or just wait a little time before you have that skin to skin um, contact it is assumed that 1% of an essential oil of an essential oil that a mother uses can be passed through breast milk so this is all this is all a newborn needs okay so like you don't need to if you feel like oh i should be using oils with my baby as soon as possible if you're really really you know excited and wanting to do the natural thing just know that just you using the oils you may be diffusing we're going to talk about that but diffusing the oils in your room um and some of them do pass through your breast milk that is it that's all your baby needs Okay, so just know that most everything that makes it into your bloodstream makes it into your breast milk. So this includes the foods that we eat, the oils we put on our skin, and also the chemicals we expose our body to. So volatile compounds like those found in essential oils can also enhance the flavor of breast milk. 
But this should also cause you to ask yourself if you are comfortable with synthetic chemicals from your personal care products and your cleaning products entering your bloodstream and therefore entering your breast milk. So what you put in and on your skin while you're pregnant or nursing directly affects your baby. <coughs> so it's, we're not just talking about essential oils that are getting into your breast milk. We are talking about the other stuff that you're putting onto your, onto your skin too. Your lotions, your um, makeup, and just go do the 90 day home detox and you'll learn all about that stuff. But just know that it's, I'm not talking about just, you know, just essential oils. I'm talking about the things that you eat and the things, the chemicals that you use in your home, goes into your bloodstream and into your breast milk. So just know that. <laughs> okay. When you're diffusing essential oils in your home, diffuse fewer drops than you normally would. So if you're if you're typically using 10 drops in your diffuser, you would only use maybe two to four drops, something like that. Um, start small, start slow. When you bring your baby home from the hospital and you wanna start diffusing, you, you wanna start very, 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 very small, okay? So you only need a few drops, a couple of drops, two to four drops in your diffuser. So you use about half of what you normally would. And you only need to diffuse anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes at a time. So set your timer or, or um, you know, just have it set up so it's maybe intermittent, but don't run it for hours on end. And you also want to make sure that your room is well ventilated. Like, so don't have a, a small confined room, shut the door and have your baby in there. That's just, that's just too much. It's too concentrated. So make sure that it's in a, a large area. It's well ventilated. Um, you're going to um, want to make sure that you, um, that your baby is able to, you know, have other air to breathe. <laughs> um, if that makes sense. Okay. So you can also make simple room sprays using just distilled water, a little bit of witch hazel, and just a few drops of like lavender or tangerine or gentle baby and spritz the air for a light pleasing aroma or to help calm before bed. So that's another way to get the oils into the air, um, but not, not much. You know, you can still achieve a scent and an atmosphere and aroma without blasting all of these oils um, into the air. So making a little room spray, a little spritzer, just do a couple little spritz and, and that is fine too. Um, <clears throat> it is not recommended that you add essential oils to your baby's bath until they are about six months old. Um, and even then, you want to, we're going to talk about this more next week because we're going to talk about from six months on to two years and then how to address issues, specific issues with babies during this time. Um, but you want to make sure that you are going to be mixing your essential oils with a, um, like one of Young Living's bath gels. Um, because you want to be able to disperse the water or disperse the oils throughout the water. You don't want the oil sitting on top. Plus, sometimes the aroma of if you were to use essential oils in your bath when your baby is itty bitty, sometimes the aroma is amplified and it's just too much. Not just for their, not, I'm not saying this just for their skin, although that is a very, you know, obviously we're not going to be using um, essential oils in the bath zero to six months for their skin, but also for the aroma to, because it can be, it can be too much. Um, Okay, so, okay, so if you do decide to use essential oils topically on your zero to six month old, you will want to heavily dilute with a carrier oil, such as sweet almond oil, avocado oil, coconut oil, jojoba oil, olive oil, or Young Living's V6 oil. Consider diluting the oil 1 to 20 ratio or 1 to 30. So that means one drop of essential oil to 20 drops of a carrier oil 
or one drop of essential oil to 30 drops of a carrier oil. So that would be the ratio that you would use. And you're always, you always would apply it to the feet. So as a rule, it is better to dilute more than less. Okay, remember I was talking about how the baby's skin is not fully developed yet and it is so thin and so permeable. Um, with every new essential oil, you want to dilute heavily and spot test on the baby's arm or leg. I personally, this is my personal opinion, I would not do that. But I know moms who do and have had no problems and feel very comfortable doing that. And that is, that's your decision. And I, I don't judge. I don't care. You know, like whatever you feel is best. I just would prefer to wait, wait till that you know, six months until I start maybe introducing the oils topically. Um, but for those of you who might feel comfortable doing this or who know other moms and have had experience or whatever, that's fine. If you notice a skin irritation though, use a carrier oil to further dilute. Like if you notice some redness or irritation, you definitely want to use a lots and lots of carrier oil to help dilute it. <coughs> <coughs> I think it's best to have your pre-diluted bottles of oils already made up in advance. This will be incredibly helpful to you and convenient. So I know that there are about 80 drops of oil in a five milliliter bottle. So a five milliliter bottle, a little one like this, has about 80 drops in it, okay? You can fit about 80 drops. Um, <clears throat> so if you use the one to 20 ratio, you would only need about three to four drops of essential oil, and then you're going to fill the rest of it up with a carrier oil. Then you can put a roller fitment on the top for easy application, or you can use a glass eyedropper, an, a glass, excuse me, eyedropper top to dispense the oils that way, because then you can actually um, have control over how many drops you want. I, I like the eyedropper just because you can see, you know, sometimes when you're getting oils out of here, um, you know, you can get too many drops or whatever. So, but having these already made up in advance, already pre-diluted, make sure you label them as to what they are because uh, you will forget what you put in there. Trust me, I've done it a gazillion times. Um, so you can you can have them all made up, have them labeled, and then when you need them, you're able to use them um, and, and get them quickly and not have to think about, okay, how many drops and how many drops of carrier oil? It's already done. Um, to get a half um, to get a half a dose or a half a drop of essential oil, um, all you need to do is put a drop in the palm of your hand, stick your finger in there. And then what is on your finger or what is left in the palm of your hand is considered half a dose or half a drop. So <clears throat> just so you know. Um, a great way to use essential oils with infants and young children is simply to rub the oils in your hands with a bit of carrier oil. Okay, so put the <coughs> carrier oil in your hand with your oil, rub your hands together, and then just simply hold over the child's back, chest, or feet for a minute or so. You're not even touching them at this point. You're just holding, you're just holding your hand over their skin. Okay? This is so powerful because you might think, well, what are you doing? You're not even doing anything. You're not even touching them. But because essential oils are so volatile, which means they evaporate very, very quickly and go into the air, they are coming off of your hand and they are getting onto your, uh, onto your child. And, but it's in a very mild way. It's not like you're slapping all these oils all over them. You, it's just such a, a mild um, a way to apply oils in a safe way okay the oil vapors are very very potent so you don't so you are providing benefit for your child just by doing this simple simple technique okay then <coughs> then you can hold a child's foot for a minute touching the oils to the feet okay so you then you then you can touch um 
your child's feet. And, and if your child is always putting their feet in their mouth, you might want to put some booties or some socks over because you do not want them to get the oils in their mouth. Ingesting essential, <laughs> essential oils, not recommended for this age, obviously. That's, that's a no-no. Okay. There are some oils that are commonly advised to be used um, with caution, okay, um, for babies zero to two years old. And I will post this list in the group, in this group, so don't worry about writing them down unless you really, really want to, but I will post this um, easy guide for you. It's a very quick and easy guide that you can refer to, okay? But I just wanted to talk to you about some oils that are commonly advised to be used with caution for babies zero to two years old. Okay, so eucalyptus, basil, nutmeg, coriander, tarragon, mountain savory, sage, juniper, Idaho tansy, hyssop, clary sage, wintergreen, panaway, aromaceae, and peppermint. Okay, those are advised to be used with caution. Okay, these are the, the typical oils. Um, you also want to be cautious to dilute hot oils or oils high in eugenol, such as clove, cassia, cinnamon bark, thieves, or lemongrass. Okay? When using oils high in eucalyptol or 1,8-cineol, you want to take extra caution to dilute and do not place these oils directly under your child's nose. It can cause respiratory distress on some. Not every child is going to react this way, but there are rare cases where this can happen. Children have very sensitive airways and every airway can respond differently. Think about how you respond when you put a drop of peppermint like I do, because it helps me with my breathing. Put a drop of peppermint on my my um, on the back of my hand, and I lick it off. As an adult, I feel you feel like whoo. Okay, it opens up the airways. Imagine what it could do to a child, a baby. It could take their breath away. So we want to make sure that we're exercising caution. We're not going to be putting these oils that are high, that are high in the, the menthol and eucalyptol and all of that. We're not going to be putting those directly underneath our child. It can be way too much for them, okay? So just, um, so just be cautious. Putting, you know, diffusing them lightly in the air if you need to. Um, or putting a teeny, heavily diluted amount on the bottom of the feet, covering the, those feet with um, booties or, or socks or something like that. But you're not going to be slathering oils all over their, their neck and their chest and underneath their nose because it's way too potent. Way too potent. It's potent for us, right? <laughs> it's potent for us. <clears throat> okay, so there are oils, gentle essential oils, that are fine to use. Um, with our babies and our infants and that in these oils typically that are are gentle and recommended are frankincense lavender tangerine bergamot cedarwood roman chamomile cypress geranium ginger lemon marjoram tea tree orange rosemary sandalwood thyme and ylang ylang so see, there are, I know that when I read the list about these are the ones you should use with caution, you're probably thinking, oh my goodness, like look at, those are so many oils, but really there are so many more oils that we can use with our babies and our children and that are safe and they are effective and, and, and they're gentle for our, our sweet, precious babies, okay? Um, I also would be remiss to not brag, absolutely brag about Young Living Seedlings Baby Care line of products. Um, and we're going to talk more about the Kids Sense essential oil collection. We're going to talk about that in the next few weeks. Um, we're not going to talk about them tonight, but I do want to talk to you about the Seedlings Baby Care line because they, I use them. 
I love them. And I don't even have a baby in the house, but I love every single one of the, 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 the seedlings baby um, products. I have them all. I have them all. Um, but what I love about them is that they are toxin free. They're safe. They're wonderful smelling like amazingness. Like I love the way they smell. Um, they have products like lotion, baby oil, wash and shampoo, wipes, diaper rash cream. I even have the diaper rash cream, um, which I have used um, as a concealer. I mix the, to the diaper rash cream with my um, powder foundation, my, my Savvy Minerals powder foundation, and I've used it for my um, under eyes. But anyway, just... I digress, but anyway, diaper rash cream. I I even use that, um, and then linen spray. So <clears throat> you don't have to worry about the safety of these products because they are free from harmful ingredients. Okay, they are gentle and they're plant based. And um, like I said, I love them. I love every single one of them, and I highly recommend if you have a baby or a toddler in your home, you should definitely invest in the seedlings uh, baby, uh, baby line. It's They're incredible. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I believe that every parent should have just these few simple things to have on hand for using essential oils with babies and children. So the very first thing that every parent should have is a good quality carrier oil. Okay, I prefer I prefer personally Young Living's V6 oil because it's the perfect consist consistency and it has a pump, has a pump for easy usage, makes it so much easier. Um, if not V6, if you, if you don't use V6, Young Living's V6 carrier oil, you can choose an organic, cold press, non-GMO, virgin, unrefined carrier oil. I mentioned some carrier oils earlier, jojoba, sweet almond oil, things like that. But just make sure that it's organic and it's it's the good stuff, okay? Because this is what you're using on your children, your babies. Um, the other thing, the other tool that I think every parent should have when using essential oils with their children is the glass eyedroppers. Um, this allows you to control a little bit better the amount of oil that you're using instead of sometimes when you're trying to get the oil out of the bottle you might get you know instead of one you get like two or three and you're like ah you know so having a glass eyedropper allows you a little bit more control so I highly recommend those um, roller bottle fitments those roller bottle fitments that you can put on your um, on your essential oil bottles your used essential oil bottles or just buying them from you can buy um, bottles off of Amazon, glass bottles with the roller fitments, and you can make your own blends, pre-diluted blends. But I think it's really important to have the roller bottle fitments um, because that way you can just roll it on their tootsies or or along their back or along their spine. Um, we're going to talk more about that later in later weeks. But um, just having roller bottle fitments is important. Um, save your essential oil bottles. Um, uh, your the one your empties so save your bottles and then you can um, use those that way you don't have to go out and buy uh, your own, your empty bottles um, uh, to make your own pre diluted so I always recommend you know save yourself some money and do that um, also I think the 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 fifth thing that I think every parent should have <clears throat> in their home um, when using oils with their children is to have the Young Living's uh, Kid Sense Lotion or the Seedlings Baby Lotion or the Seedlings Baby Oil because they are a perfect pair. Uh, they're perfect to pair with essential oils. So you can add your essential oils to your baby lotion. You can add your essential oils to your Kid Sense Lotion or your Seedlings Baby Oil and use that um, kind of like a carrier oil. <laughs> <coughs> So you never want to use essential oils with store-bought <coughs> synthetic toxin, toxic um, lotions and stuff like that. You, you don't want to do that. You don't want to mix unnatural with natural. So that's why I highly recommend just getting to be on the safe side, just get the Kid Sense Lotion, um, the Seedlings Baby Lotion, or the Seedlings Baby Oil, and then you can um, you, uh, um, add your oils to those and then gently apply them to the skin. 
Um, okay, so next week we're going to be talking about supporting systems of the body with six months to two years. So we're going to discuss very specific things, okay, very specific things that you can do and which oils typically work great for those systems of the body. So please post your questions if you have any, and I will do my best to answer them. <coughs> <laughs> or rely on, I'm going to rely on the other experienced parents in the group to share their experiences too. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I just want to say I appreciate you taking the time to tune in. I hope that learning in these bite-sized chunks will make it less intimidating and less overwhelming. Um, there's Really, there's a lot to cover as we learn about essential oils with kids. There's so many different um, areas that we can talk about, and we can't possibly talk about all of them in one night. So I'm 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 happy that we're going to kind of do this in bite-sized chunks. Um, different ages require different dilution ratios, and different ages require you know different methods of application and different oils like which ones are safe to use at different times so we're going to take this slow and we're going to take this easy so that is a wrap for tonight but i will see you in the group this week and on facebook live again next week at the same time next wednesday 8 30 eastern standard time so please 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 share with your friends and invite them to join to join the group because Parents need um, parents need this information. Parents don't know how um, how to use the essential oils. Um, you know, the people that are new to essential oils don't know how to use them with their kids. Or some people feel very comfortable using them with themselves as adults, but then they're like, mm, they're a little leery about with their kids. But I want to put your mind at ease, and I want to give you confidence. Um, to use your essential oils, but I want to show you how to do it um, the right way. So I'm just going to scroll through because I have not looked at any of the questions or comments. So I apologize, but I tend to ignore that because I get, I have major squirrel syndrome. I get very, very, very distracted. So let me just kind of scroll through here. Um, to see if I've missed anything or if I can answer any questions. Um, okay. I appreciate your comments, by the way. Um, yes, I love it that kids ask for oils. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, Okay, so Jesse said you'd still need to dilute gentle baby with that same ratio for for ages zero to six months. I would personally. That's what I would do. Just to be on the safe side. You're never gonna go wrong with diluting. Ever. Ever. Yes, Young Living sells the roller fitments ten dollars for ten dollars. Yes, you're right. Um Okay. All right. So hopefully that helps. Um, hopefully this is a good foundation, a good starting point for us. Um, and I cannot wait to dive into more specific things next week as we talk about six months to two years. Because that's different. We're going to be talking about a lot of different things. We're going to be talking, I mean, this week it was kind of hard because like, if you can't really, if it's not generally recommended that you use you use oils topically from zero to six months, then there's really not much to talk about, right? <laughs> Sorry about my cough. I am working on this. <clears throat> yes, I wish that I I wish that I had learned about essential oils when when Sophia was a teeny tiny baby, um, but it wasn't until she was four years old when we started using them on her. So, um, so I've actually had to learn a lot myself between that age, that, that time frame. But I'm really good and experienced with four years and up. <laughs> so, but anyway. All right, everybody. Well, I'm gonna say good night. So thank you so much for joining me. And please, like I said, please share this group with your friends and family and other moms and dads and aunts and uncles and grandparents and 
and anybody else you think would really benefit from learning about how to use oils um, with your children and your babies. So, all right, you guys, thank you so much. I am so grateful for you. Um, have a good night.